Yeah, Matt. How's it going, brother? Hello. We're doing really I'm doing fun. good. How are from you? From Hawaii to New York, we're connected, which is great. Yeah, um, I'm super excited to do this. I am uh, excited to talk about my work and share it with everybody and uh, get some Absolutely. Uh, feedback no, I'm, from I'm you stoked too. to have you here and thank you for taking the time out to do this and share the knowledge with the people. You know, you, we've seen your work and been a big admirer of your work. I've got to shoot with you once or twice and um, look to it again yeah. and shooting in the cold. It's something that is just, you know, it takes a lot of commitment and it's a lot of love and passion to put on a thick wetsuit as you do and go shoot in the snow and um, being able to capture that. I mean, it's not always wetsuits, but a uh, majority of the time there. So tell us a little bit about how you got started and how you began to shoot your water career, even just photography in general. Uh, well, it all started uh, with myself being introduced to bodyboarding through a friend um, and I was hooked immediately. So. You can imagine a couple of 13 year olds going out with no idea what they were doing with bodyboards and just having fun. And from there it became a bit of an obsession where it kind of took over my life. And I started doing pretty poorly in school. And because of that, I was yeah. grounded by my mother. And from that, I kind of found a way to still get into the ocean. The way of getting into the ocean was buying one of those disposable cameras that used to be up by at the drugstore. Um, and going out and taking photos because I wasn't surfing, so I wasn't breaking the rules that my mom had set for me. Uh, <laughs> I was still kind of cheating though. So that's where it all started, but it really developed um, right around when I was about, okay. uh, I was like 20, 20 years old, I think, uh, when a couple of friends who also bodyboarded uh, had bought a, like a small digital camera, and it was the first time I had ever seen something where you could shoot a photo and then you get it immediately. And I was amazed. I couldn't believe it. So for my birthday Christmas present that year, right. I requested a, a DSLR and I ended up getting one and I got it early. I was able to finagle getting it for my birthday in November. Um, and the first day I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to pursue this. I want to become a <laughs> professional surf photographer and tra travel around the world. Um, and it kind of developed a little bit differently than that. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm still out there doing it, uh, now 15, right. still in love with it, later. still shooting all the time as you can get in the water. I, I would right. say more in love with it than ever before, because now I can kind of, mm -hmm. I have a little bit more control over what I'm doing. So there's more creativity in it, uh, versus what it had started as, which was a little bit of, uh, just kind of documenting friends, mm -hmm. uh, documenting waves, and kind of trying to show that New York had waves where people weren't gotcha. really, they didn't know about it, um, and trying to get uh, the attention gotcha. of some Yeah, well, you, you've done that. You've, you've achieved that and much more. So it's amazing to see the progression of your work and seeing just the different, like, how you're really pushing the limits. Sometimes it's just the colors that you're able to achieve and the motions is um, quite inspiring on that. So where, where did you say where you were um, born and kind of like where you're raised? You know, what is your home break that you're shooting? So my home break is a little tiny spot called Point Lookout, which is right next to an inlet. Um, that's where I grew up bodyboarding. And that spot has kind of changed over the years. Uh, they did some dredging of the outer sandbars and that kind of changed thing. But basically it was like a really fun little shore break uh, that works great for shooting wave photos. Um, there are plenty of spots all over Long Island, which is New York. That's the, that's where you're going to surf. If you're going to surf in New York, it's going to be on the Island of Long Island. Um, I was born in Astoria, Queens. Uh, that's kind of where I spent half of my childhood and then moved right. out to Long Island. So Astoria is, literally right. across the river from Manhattan. Um, so I'm a little bit of like a city kid slash Long wow. Island. That's amazing. Oh, wow. stoked yeah. to hear all of that. Really excited to see all your images. I, I think we'll bring those images up right now. We'll start talking a little bit about what you're shooting with and what inspires you to keep going. It's, oh, this has an yeah. amazing feel to that. You know, that is something very, the black and white, I think really just adds to it. 
Yeah. That was an important factor in this one. Uh, this image was taken mm -hmm. the day before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. in 2006. Um, and this photograph kind of encapsulates what it is to be a surfer mm -hmm. in New York. I mean, you got all of the different elements there. You got the urban feel with the buildings that are right there on the beach. You've got the desolation. Uh, you can see there's four kids that are checking the surf right there. Mm -hmm. You got a little urban construction on the left. And you got those cloudy gray skies that you get uh, when it's nor'easter season, which is basically our fall, uh, and also the best time <laughs> That's to go. Nice. Surf. And are you shooting this from an apartment, or what are you shooting this from? Just like a, it's a pretty good vantage point when you when you're shooting these like kind of lineups. You know, it's something that like is what's seen, but almost like putting people there. And um, I think that's something that I've seen a lot of your work, not only just in the tight and like close up imagery, but seeing these like le like these lineups that really like mm -hmm. put the viewer there. Can you tell us a little bit about where you shot it and what you're shooting with on this? Yes. So this image uh, was inspired by a photograph that I had seen someone had taken uh, maybe six months prior, I think there was a bodyboarding competition right in the area and these people were staying mm -hmm. in a hotel um, okay. that is like two blocks in from the beach. Um, and they had shot a photo from their window and it kind of, it wasn't this image, but it got me thinking, wow, you know what? If I had access to that hotel's roof, I could probably get a pretty cool photo. So I'd gone up there a couple months prior and I kind of scattered it out and took a couple photos okay. and I thought, you know what? When the waves get really good, I'm gonna go up there again. So I did not get permission to take this photo. And now this is a long time ago and I would get permission now. But in the beginning uh, is a little different. So I had sailed the side of what? the hotel up there, uh, fire escape, and then climbed onto the roof and wow. shot this photo in the pouring rain. Um, and with this photo, I took it with a, uh, it was the Canon mm -hmm. uh, 5D, the original one, and the That's Canon 70 to 200 yeah. Um, yeah. that's a great lineup a lens. like lens like to uh, me like getting that kind of perspective with like a 7200 is probably one of my favorite lenses to use for lineup shots in that way you know and like just gives you that range but like just puts you there i guess mm. absolutely it's the most versatile uh you know it's got the length so that you can be further back you can kind of capture everything it's really amazing works mm -hmm. great super sharp um, I love shooting lineups at 2.8, which I think is right. not the way that most people do that. Um, but you have to here in New York, you have to shoot, uh, about 2.8 when it's like these conditions, mm. this was like right before dark. Um, so really dark moody shot that I was able to capture. And this image, uh, kind of represents what it is. To it, it has that feel. For it definitely gives me a little bit of a chill, but it also like, the perfection that you can if you seek it out. And I think what you really touched on was like a very important point where you were saying, you know, you had seen this. This wasn't something that you like created or invented like the, the viewpoint of it, but you made it your own. You found that you, if you went a little bit higher, you could see, you know, so, so seeing people's imagery or the inspirations or seeing these things, but then making it your own, I think that was a very important factor to this of like what I heard of you saying and like, you know, it's like, if I could just get a little bit higher up, that would be the difference of this, this shot. And I, you know, you achieved that. Absolutely. Uh, with that question, I am constantly inspired by other people's photographs and also their artwork, um, which has kind of played into a lot of what I've been doing in the last maybe four or five years uh, is being inspired by paintings. That. Click through these and got to wake up early for these ones. <laughs> Well, this one's actually oh. another, this is a sunset shot, <laughs> okay. this one here. Sleep in then. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have, well, in, in the past couple of years, it's become more of a preference of mine to shoot at dawn. Now, back then, um, I'd be shooting pretty much only in the evenings uh, when I was a bit younger. Yeah. I don't think I could really wake up so early. So this photo, uh, this photo is also taken in New York. This is uh, Long Beach. Uh, this photograph was really mm. super, super lucky, uh, the way that everything lined up and also what had developed from myself taking this photo. So the story behind it is a friend of mine who I used mm. to shoot surf photos with all the time. 
we were looking for waves all day and it was kind of cloudy and it wasn't really coming together and the conditions weren't great. And right before dark, he said, you know what? I'm just going to paddle out. I'm going to go surf. And I was like, you know what? I might as well go. I'm down here. Let me go out and shoot. So I swam out and I shot this with yeah. a 15 millimeter fisheye. Um, and I was just out there looking to get surf photos and just before dark, and I'm not exaggerating at all. 10 minutes the light was like this that's it the entire day yeah. and it just happened to be i was out there the sun dropped mm. just below that cloud right on the horizon and didn't right. dip below the horizon yet and it just illuminated wow. it yeah. like this it was insane so it just the light in new york is some of the best in the world because we have these crazy dramatic fronts that pass by and we are situated in a position where uh basically the entire year you have the sun Gee. perpendicular Lucky. to the surf so you get these crazy sunsets and sunrises yeah. that are beautiful. We, we get that like maybe two months out of the year at like Sandy Beach. You know what I mean? As it like kind of clocks around, it's like yeah. always moving one yeah. way or the other. And so it's like you get that little window of it. But I just like that just right there. I mean, your your focus, uh, exposure, just the buildings on that is just something kind of puts me right there. It feels like I'm body surfing. Yeah, this, I mean, this is the classic shot, looking out of the tube with the sun and just beautiful colors. And this photograph actually ended up being used for the Quicksilver Pro wow. New York contest wow. as their promo image, which was the biggest yeah. competition yeah. of all time. So this image ended up being used um, to promote the competition in New York. It was used on the New York City wow. Metro system. It was in Times Square. It was in the Quicksilver store everywhere. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have seen this image and uh, yeah. I'm the guy who well, took it. that must be bad. I mean, this is the epitome of like kind of putting yourself there, point of view. And you know, you wouldn't think the first thing you think of when you think of New York or East Coast wouldn't be this. The colors, you know, in the barrel barreling, it's not your atypical. I mean, I guess you know, like not to be naive on that, like that's not the first thing you think of with New York, but I feel like you're very much shifting that. And you're showing that beauty and that perspective of what mm -hmm. you know and what you see and being able to capture it. But it's not easy. As you said, there's a 10 minute window. If these things didn't line up, if the wave didn't come, that goes anywhere in the world. But especially here must be a little more daunting to get these kind of moments like this all to line up. Right, right. Yeah. And, and it just sometimes it's a little bit of luck. But as far as luck goes, you have to be there in order to get that luck. You have to be out there and you have to be out shooting. And that means yeah. being dedicated Absolutely. to your craft. This is a wild one. The backstory on this one first. This is great. So the backstory of this is this is the roller coaster called the, I believe it's incorrectly called the Jet, the jet Star. I believe it's called the Star Jet. I, I'm not 100% sure. I forget what it was. But this is the um, remnants of that roller coaster that had fallen in the water Jeez. after Hurricane Sandy in New Jersey. Um, so this image um, is what was left before uh, the skeleton Jeez. of the roller coaster was removed. Um, it had sat mm -hmm. there for months, actually. And a local New Jersey person had swam out there or boated out there. Um, and climbed up the roller coaster. You can see the American flag up on the top. Whoa. They planted it up there. Um, and yeah. it's a really wild story. So um, I was on my way back from further south. I was in Maryland mm -hmm. doing a, a little photo shoot for a friend. And on the way back, um, I said, you know what? I really want to capture this because I know this is a moment that is going to be gone at some Absolutely. point. It's not going to sit there forever. And inspired by a couple of people, mm -hmm. Brian Nevins in particular, who has... Um, kind of taking advantage of some things that have happened in the past where he would go and document uh, something. So I was inspired by that. And I thought, you know what, this is not going to be here forever. So let me go try to take a photo. And I went there and it was closed off. The entire beach was closed off. The police were there. They said, there's no one allowed to go on the beach. You can't even get close to it. A friend of mine who I was with brought a surfer magazine where I had a photo published and went to the closest police officer and said, this guy's a famous photographer. Maybe he can get on the beach. Is there anything you can do? And the, the police officer was a surfer. I knew who I was. I had never That's met epic. him. 
So he let me go and set up my tripod and take this photo, which I think is probably about, uh, I would say it's probably like a three second um, long photo, yep. three second exposure. Um, and, you know, I was able to get a couple shots off and this is the one that stood out yep. the most to me. Uh, you know, it has a little bit of movement, but really captures yep. the entire structure and is super Very. dramatic with the low clouds, and, uh, adding a little bit of a vignette around the edges. Um, and this photograph I submitted to the Weather Channel um, in 2015. And I told the story behind it. And that ended up being wow. awarded the photo of the year, which got me a wow. $15,000 grand prize. That's amazing, there. dude. Congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just really hope for any other photographers out there who are aspiring um, just to really pass on this message that, if you don't take advantage of Absolutely. your time and you don't go out there and really pursue your craft and make sure you're in some spot, you have any and make it happen um, because Absolutely. it's not going to happen to you. You have to make it happen. Um, so being out there, being in the water at dawn, being in the water right before dark, um, you know, chasing it. That is the key. To Absolutely. And I, I think also like, you know, abiding by the law, but not taking no for an answer, because if you just were like, oh, they're not letting mm -hmm. anyone on and you left, we wouldn't be here talking about this image. You wouldn't have won the Weather Channel mm -hmm. like award. And it was like that little extra, because what does that hurt to ask? Hey, you know, we got the photo inside here. Like, let's do this. So it's like that little bit extra is a image that you'll always have, you know, and it's something that you know, a moment and that story and everything like that. So, you know, um, yeah, don't, don't take that no for an answer, but don't go illegal, but don't take that no. Yeah. Yeah, do your best yep. within within reason. Stay safe, and um, and these kind of images Absolutely. are waiting to be taken. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.